So today I'd like to talk about series and parallel circuits. Now on my original channel, Mouse Off B, I actually looked at series and parallel circuits before several years ago. So this is kind of a revisit to that. The setup I had back then was kind of crude and maybe not as easy to follow, but this one here should be a little bit easier. Plus this allows me to show you a couple of different items that can work in series or parallel. But for people that are not familiar with series and parallel, it's kind of just how the devices or loads are set up in the in the circuit. Now, again, there's two kinds of ways that the loads can be set up. They can be in series with each other or they can be in parallel with each other. Now, what you see right here, right now, is a series circuit. And the way that that is, is there's one wire that connects all the loads from the voltage source through our devices and back. Now I've got two resistors on here and if you remember from Ohm's law to resist anything that has resistance is a load. So I've got two loads on here and again like I say they're connected in series. They're connected in line with each other on the same line. And so the current flows through one goes through this wire then flows through the other device. So you've got what's called a series circuit. Now the resistors here, I've got a 100 kilo ohms resistor on the top and a 10,000 kilo ohm resistor on the bottom. Now as you might remember if you've seen the Ohm's Law video, the higher the resistance value, the less current can go through that load. Now I've got a whole segment probably on another video that I'm going to have talking about resistors in series and parallel, capacitors in series and parallel, and, and inductors in series and parallel, but that's kind of all for the calculation bit of it. This is kind of more of a demonstration purpose. And I've connected an ammeter up in series in the circuit so we can see the difference in the current versus series or parallel circuits. So if I press our button here, the meter needle moves up a little bit. It's a little hard to see that meter. Let me adjust this. And zoom in to show you what happens when I push the button. So I'm pushing the button. And the meter just goes up a little ways. Now there is current in the circuit, but the meter is on the low setting. This is 0 to 10 milliamps is the range that the meter can read. And it's not even making it to the first mark. And from what I see, it's probably only about two tenths of a milliamp going through the circuit, or in my case, they would be 200 microamps of current. That's 10 to the 6, negative 6 power. So this says here that there's a lot of resistance in the circuit, and not a whole lot of current is getting through. So again, it's only two tenths of one milliamp. So that's how that would look in a series circuit. Now, what happens if I reconfigure these resistors in a different way? Now the circuit configuration that we have here is a parallel circuit. And parallel means the devices, like in math, the parallel lines, well, they're all lined up with each other, so they're in a parallel configuration. And in parallel, the current has its own individual paths to go through, so there's one line of current through there and another line of current through there. So these have their own lines of current going through. They're not in line where they were before, where it was just one loop. Basically, we look at it as a current loop. You got one current loop here and another current loop there. Now, what will happen if I supply power to the circuit with them in parallel now? Well, let's look back at the meter. Bring the meter up here. I'll press the button. Now you see a much larger deflection on the meter. It's now showing that there is a full 10 milliamps of current going through the meter. Well, again, why is 10 milliamps of current going through the circuit now versus the two tenths of one milliamp when the resistors were in series? Well, again, this is because 
there was a lot of resistance in the circuit with the resistors in series. In parallel, there's actually less resistance in the circuit, so more current can flow. The other factor is when a circuit is in parallel like this, the current will actually go through the load that has the least amount of resistance. In this case, it would be this 10,000 ohm resistor. Again, because this 100,000 ohm resistor has much more resistance versus this 10,000 ohm resistor. So more current is flowing through this loop versus this loop over here with 100,000 ohm. And to prove that, we can activate the circuit again. And we got 10 milliamps. Now I'm going to unclip the 100,000 ohm resistor. Again, the needle only went down just a little bit. But again, most of the current is all going through this 10,000 ohm resistor. Now if I put the 100,000 ohm resistor back and I take off the 10,000 and apply the current, see it's only a little bit of current there. It's not even one milliamp. So it shows that also, current will always flow through whatever load provides the least amount of resistance. Now, that's how it is with resistors, and that's basically how series and parallel circuits work. Now, I've got some other devices here, so let's have some fun with how this circuit can work in series and parallel with other devices. So, I've got two incandescent lamps here. One is a 6-volt lamp, another is a 3-volt lamp. And I'm going to put this 6 volt one that's actually right here in series with this 3 volt one. And I'm going to change the meter over to the high current setting, which goes from 0 to 1 amp, since we're going to be drawing more current with these. Now, if I hit the on switch, you'll see the light come on, and then you'll see this other one come on, but they're both dim. Now, here's an interesting thing I'll talk about with incandescent lamps here. When I push the button, you notice how this lamp here starts off bright and then gets dim when this one comes on. Let me show it again. Top one starts bright, bottom one's off, then it lights up and that one goes dim. The thing with incandescent lamps is their resistance actually changes depending on the temperature of the filament. This is one of the interesting factors of what makes a light bulb, incandescent light bulb work. They have what's called a positive temperature coefficient, and that affects the resistance of the bulb based on temperature. So when the bulb is off like this when it's cold, it may only be a couple of ohms of resistance. But when the filament gets hot, when current flows through it, the resistance goes up quite a bit. It may go as high as six to 800 ohms, depending on the uh, filament of the bulb. That explains why when I first turn this on, this lamp is bright. So this one lights up and then that one goes dim because this one is starting up first because it's first in the circuit here. And it starts off bright because there's very little resistance through this six volt lamp. But when the filament of this 6 volt lamp heats up, then the resistance of that bulb goes up, which then limits the current through this 3 volt lamp, which is why you see it go down in brightness, becomes dim. So that's an interesting thing with incandescent lamps, because you can't get an accurate measurement of a light bulb's resistance because of that. You've got to compensate for that positive temperature coefficient. And again, I was showing you the lamps there. I actually didn't show you the current, but also the current you'll see will be affected by that. I can turn it on. And you notice that the meter bumps up a little bit and then goes down. And again, that's because of that factor with the lamp. So now let me put these in parallel. And we'll look at the current again. So now I have the bulbs in parallel. They've got their own current loops. I press the button, both lamps come on, and the three volt lamp is bright because I've got a three volt source. The six volt is brighter 
than when it was in series, but it's still dim because it doesn't have enough input voltage to get full brightness, full luminosity. Now when we look at the meter, the needle is back up higher again. It's showing about 400, 300 to 400 milliamps of current going through the circuit now. Again, the, most of the current is actually going through probably, let me see here, yeah, most of the current is going through the 6 volt lamp because the 6 volt lamp requires a higher voltage source so it's got a little more current trying to go through that 3 volt one. So that's how lamps would work in series and parallel and you also learn about their positive temperature coefficient. Now the very last thing I want to show here is a DC motor and a speaker. Now this is kind of interesting in its own respect to what these do. So we've got our speaker and DC motor in series. I'm going to turn on the circuit. Well, actually this is not a switch, this is a button. So I hit that. Again, our current's very low. I'm not sure if this will work in low. Nope. See, we got a low amount of current going through there because this speaker is acting like a resistor to the motor here. Now, one of the interesting things about the motor being connected in series with the speaker is if you can hear it, you can hear the noise of the motor actually coming out the speaker. And if I mess around with this motor, you'll actually notice the sound change. That's usually considered a whole separate circuit by itself, but that's an interesting thing that can be done with a motor and speaker in series. Now I'm going to once again move these around in parallel. The speaker here. Do I have enough room for the fan? Yes, I do. Now I'm going to have the motor with the fan on it, so now the motor's going to have a load on it, and then the speaker's just going to be in parallel with it. 